But I'm saying that in an RP lore world, he didn't do anything illegal and shouldn't have been killed for it. Should he be banned? That's not for me to say. It very much was NVL. <laughs> he was going 171 miles per hour. Um, but I might be responsible. Um, I might be responsible for them not being allowed to use DNA anymore. You guys want me to, you guys want me to show you my, the report that I did? You want to know something that's fucking hilarious? I did police work. I investigated and tested and wrote a report. Wow. Holy shit. That was so hard. Oh my god. So, Nino tasked me. He said, write up a report and we're going to write a legislation to shut down DNA used in uh, investigations. If I'm responsible for that, holy fuck, bro. That, let's put that on my belt of pivotal things that I've done. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be responsible for that. And I was responsible for all the terrorists ex escaping the prison. Um... Let me show you guys my report. Oh, leaked. Share X leak. Okay, can you guys read that? Does that look good? I mean, I'm gonna read it, so... You guys should be fine. Uh, Desk of Richard Woikyu, Department of ERP, DERP. Through multiple instances of testing in conjunction with Jackson Decker of the LSPD, I have now acquired a few notable issues in regards to the reliability of trace DNA found on evidence. On Thursday, August 1st, 2024, I was in attendance to a meeting between Assistant Chief Ruby York and Mr. Kebin. Rami El Rahim and Jackson Decker were also a party to this meeting. Mr. Kevin requested this meeting after being arrested due to trace DNA of his being found on a duffel bag that was thrown out of a moving car during a standard police chase following a laundromat robbery. Mr. Kevin was never seen, heard, or ID'd in any form of, uh, in any fashion during said robbery, and the only Evidence linking him to the crime was his previously mentioned DNA on a thrown duffel bag. While listening to this meeting, I took it upon myself to test out a theory of mine. Earlier in the day, I had found a brick while out on the streets of Los Santos, and while standing in the lobby of MRPD, I requested Miss Ruby York to humor me in my curiosity. I asked her to take the brick from my hand and then hand it back to me. I then handed the brick to Mr. Kevin and he placed it on the floor. I request Jackson Decker to take the brick to the forensics room of MRPD and run it for mine, Mr. Kevin's, or Ruby's DNA. Decker returned and informed us that the only DNA on the brick came from one Zolo Levy as well as Mr. K. I am unsure if Mr. K's DNA came from him holding it during this situation or it, it, uh, if his DNA had remained from an earlier incident involving Zolo. This piqued my interest, as it very much showed that any object handed directly to an individual or picked up off the ground does not retain trace DNA as my own, along with Ruby York's and Decker's were not present on the object. But for some reason, gently setting it down results in enough trace DNA to be found under forensics. Even with just this one test, I believe it's enough to showcase that DNA is inherently flimsy and unreliable, especially when it comes to sentencing an innocent man to jail time. But if it weren't enough already. Today, on Friday, August 2nd, I made another huge discovery involving LSBN mountable cameras. Once again, with Jackson Decker's assistance, I ran another test. 
Decker claims that my DNA would be found on any object that I drop, throw, or place on the ground. So I tried something. Instead of simply dropping or gently placing the LSBN camera on the floor, I used its sticky underbelly the same way I would if I were working an LSBN story. I stuck it on the floor and Decker picked it up to test it for DNA similarly to the brick from the day before. Jackson Decker found no trace of my DNA on the camera, nor his own. This means that if I were to hand that camera to an innocent civilian, force them to throw it or gently place the camera on the floor, trace amounts of their DNA would stick to the camera. I could then pick up the camera without worry of my DNA being found on the object. This means that if I were to gain access to a private location, like the meeting room of MRPD, and I were to stick the camera onto a surface inside that room resulting in an officer finding it, they would run it for DNA and, uh, and the result would have no trace of my DNA on it, leading to an innocent man who threw it having a warrant placed for their arrest under the belief that they fell any trespass to place the camera inside MRPD. Both these tests showcase how inherently flawed and unreliable DNA is when it comes to prosecuting an individual in the sense that it leaves too many crucial variables out of the picture. DNA should either be omitted from any future case or instead, at most, uh, be used to bring someone in for questioning rather than putting a warrant out for their arrest. Bleh. Duh. Absolute dog water of a PD. But I just want to point out again, I did an investigation in conjunction with the L with uh, the LSPD, and I wrote a well-worded, well-documented report on the investigation. Almost like police work. It's not hard. I don't understand why, like, doing reports is so, like, difficult. Dev's aim for implementing DNA into the server was exactly this RP, but the PD was incapable of articulating. Instead, they just used it as an excuse to uh, avoid further investigation. They decided it's enough evidence. Erko incompetence. True.